why does it matter that AI is in everything at the moment? Well, there's a few reasons. I mean, you, like I, have probably been trying all sorts of different tools, productivity tools, creation tools, imagery, text. It's all doing it right now. AI is being built into every tool that you probably use on your computer right now, with the exception of this streaming software that I'm using, which is frustrating. But we're seeing it show up in a whole bunch of different applications. Grammarly, which you may be using already to help make your text in your emails in Gmail a little bit better, or perhaps enhancing a Word document is going to be adding the feature to write and interpret text for you as well. And it will roll out automatically across a bunch of different websites that you might be writing for, even in Word and Gmail and Google Docs. They're using, of course, like many people are, OpenAI's GPT-3 launch language model. We can imagine also it's probably going to be GPT-4 in the future. See my previous video about that earlier. But of course, it's not just text, but it's also images. Microsoft has just announced recently its new Microsoft Designer tool, which as this demo helpfully shows, is very soon going to be able to allow you to create essentially social media posts, graphics, slides, that type of thing from text-based prompts, again, using GPT-3 as the underlying tech from OpenAI. This is essentially going to kill off a bunch of different other tools that you might be using and obviously a big rival to Canva. So why does it matter? Why does it matter that these tools are all adding generative AI to their platforms? Well, the big thing is, is that they begin to raise consumer public expectations of what these platforms can do. We've gone from expecting these tools to kind of give us some level of assistance akin to like spell checking to now essentially being able to do almost all of it for us or certainly accelerate the process. The big difference with generative AI here rather than other consumer technology revolutions of years gone by is that there's no new hardware to roll out. It's just software changes, just enhancements to existing tools that we're already using. And that re removes massive barriers that for other technologies we've previously seen people have to get over. There's also no expense of people buying new devices like, you know, kind of smart speakers, for example. And so that is why we're going to see this AI revolution sweep through the internet far quicker than we have done with other types of paradigms. It's just text to speech and speech to text coming at you in all different formats across different AI prompted applications. So let me know which of these are you using and how excited are your organizations right now about the potential for generative AI to either add to your processes or rip them to shreds. I look forward to getting your thoughts in the comments below. See you soon.